Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Welcome to uh, Calvary Chapel Harvest Life and our Maranatha Prophecy Update service tonight. I'm glad to have everyone here and those that are watching uh, along online as well. Yeah, the heat, the heat, God turned up the heat all of a sudden, didn't he, right? Yeah, it's like, it's, like I, it's like I said this morning, maybe we can turn it down just slightly. It's, it's like I said this morning, you know, we went from winter to two weeks of spring and summer. That, that's all we get. So if you, if you uh, were out of town during those two weeks, you missed it. We went from winter to summer, and uh, there you go. So <laughs> it, yeah, before you know it, yep, it's going to be super hot. Well, hello, Annette Hamilton and uh, Oki Girl, Caterlin, Carly Saved by Grace, Vicki Vaughn, Jessica, and Vin Dog Radio. Vin Dog, hey, Vinny, bro, good to have you on. Watchman's Post. Um, Oh, man, uh, Jason Garza. Jason, you're on everything, Jason. <laughs> you get around, man. Uh, Chris, I see Anna, Gerard, all, all y'all, the Bible Explorer. And uh, hi back to you, Ida Gonzalez, Gerard. Man, I can, I can keep on mentioning you guys forever. Got so many that are joining us right now. And, uh, and uh, on the chat, is, in fact, we've got um, Janice and uh, Carol Moody saying hi from Missouri. Uh, let's see, we got Robin. Uh, it's cold in Philly. Wow. <laughs> it's definitely not cold here. Um, you know, Janice and uh, saying that the spring is beautiful in, uh, in Jersey. And uh, well, guys, I, I really am glad to have uh, everyone that's joining us. And I love to call you guys out because, you know, I can't see you guys and, uh, and no one here can see you guys either uh, or, or shake your hand or, uh, or anything like that. And so uh, I, just, I just think it's so important that, that we know that we got so much uh, and so many more, guys, uh, of a church family that is uh, is watching from uh, from all parts all over and uh, you know the the thing that's really cool is that one of these days we are going to be caught up uh, to to meet the Lord in the air we're going to be up and out of here and uh, and, and no luck no luggage fees by the way no luggage fees, uh, but then again, we're not going to be taking anything with us, because why would we want to take the things with us that moth and rust destroy, that thieves break in and steal, right? So we ain't going to want any of those things anyhow, and, and it's going to be the best coffee, I'm sure. It's got to be the best coffee in heaven, by the way. So, I, uh, you know, Lee Brainerd, you know, some of us will talk about Starbucks and, and all the different coffee ones, coffee bean and stuff out there. And coffee bean's really good. Um, but I like what uh, Lee Brainerd says. He calls it Heaven Bucks Coffee. Now, instead of Starbucks, we're going to trade that in for Heaven Bucks Coffee. And man, that is going to be absolutely the best. And for those of you that are tea drinkers, well, the coffee's going to be the best. So... <laughs> <laughs> All right. My son's a tea drinker. <laughs> My youngest son's a tea drinker, I should say. So. All right. So we all can't be perfect. Um, but... Um, Anyhow, why don't we just open up, uh, we're going to get to, uh, yes, I love that, Annette, soon and very soon. Uh, Do you ever hear the song, soon and very soon, we are going to see the king? I love, 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 love that song. So um, why don't we just open up with a word of prayer, and uh, we're going to get right on to it tonight. Lord, uh, we do give you thanks this evening, Lord. We have so much to be thankful for. We're here in this place, Lord, in this building. There's air conditioning. There are, are comfortable seats to sit in. There's so much, Lord. There's lighting that we just flip on and we have lights and, and provisions and so many things, Lord God. We're so thankful. But the most important thing is that in this place, Lord, you are here with us. Because as we have gathered together, and even those, Lord God, that have gathered together online and they're, they're building fellowship with one another on the chat, that, Lord, that we come together as the body of Christ. And we have that fellowship. We have that koinonia with one another. And, Lord, we are so thankful. And we're so thankful, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. 
that is with us tonight and where two or more are gathered, that there I am in the midst of you. And you, Lord, you are in the midst of us here and in the gathering online, Lord. Just go before us. Bless our time in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Hey, before I forget, this coming Thursday, um, we've got Mark Henry that's going to be joining us. And uh, so really looking forward to that. Um, just again, another wonderful brother uh, in the Lord. And um, uh, so I hope that you can tune in for that this uh, this Thursday. Be looking forward to that big time, big time. Guys, let's open up our Bibles here for a moment to First Timothy chapter 4. I just want to glance over some things. There's just some things that are just on my heart that I've been uh, been chewing on here just a little bit. So it, we're definitely not looking at this chapter in any in-depth study. Um, but I do want to just uh, glance over some of these verses here. And uh, then we're going to get into uh, covering a number, a number of things tonight. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, uh, a little bit here for a few minutes. Uh, Whoopi Goldberg and Joy uh, Bo- uh, Behard, if I'm saying her name right, and, and the, the program uh, The View. And something really pretty astonishing. Um, that they said and and just uh, but I, I'll tell you a little bit more about that uh, shortly um, what's going on a little bit with artificial intelligence uh, things that uh, the FBI uh, is doing that um, is definitely something to to have uh, uh, get our attention the future or the I should say the pandemic uh, treaty coming up in May, gene editing, a number of things having to do with cash and, uh, and money and all of that. Uh, a couple of interesting videos. Uh, one of them, uh, let's, just, let's just put it this way, one of them you're going to hear right out of the horse's mouth himself. <clears throat> right out of the horse's mouth himself. Um, and so uh, if you doubt uh, maybe some of the things that I say, hey, listen to it coming directly uh, from them. So anyhow, we'll get into all of that here shortly. But uh, First Timothy chapter 4, it's really interesting because in this chapter, uh, if, uh, I believe we see the word doctrine three times. Three times. Doctrine, our doctrine is important, Okay. And, uh, <clears throat> well, let's just re- begin reading this, and let's talk about this for a moment. It says, Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, right? Here we are, guys. In latter times, some will depart from the faith, right? They're not just a faith, right? But some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits, so to depart uh, and, and apostasy there and to give heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. See, there's true biblical doctrine and then there are doctrines of demons. Guys, demonic entities are always behind the falsehoods that are out there. There has been such an explosion of, uh, of cults, non-Christian cults, uh, all of these different uh, religions and whatnot around the world. A massive explosion of these things really since right around the 1850s or so, about 175 years or so approximately. And there has been just an exponential growth uh, of those things, a growth, a massive growth of deception. Uh, in these last days, these doctrines of demons, that's where they come from. That's where they originate from. Speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. And so we're seeing lies Um, before us here, we're seeing truth, right? We're seeing lies, we're seeing truth. We're seeing doctrines of demons, and then there's good, healthy doctrine 
as well. Forbidding to marry, all of these things, abstaining from foods which God created. Hey, don't eat cows, don't eat uh, chickens, don't, you know, don't drink, you know, all of these kinds of things that they are moving in that direction. And we've been saying this for a while. And why is it important to share these things? Because the word of God is sharing with us. The word of God is giving us these guideposts, so to speak. Right. Guys, listen, you, you, you travel out of town. Right. I'll go down to Southern California or whatever it might be, right? And as you're, as you're driving, right, you're going to have those, those, those highway markers. You're going to have those guideposts. You're on um, uh, whatever thing that you use, if it's Google Maps or, you know, there's other ones, um, but you're probably using Google Maps, right? And it's going to tell you you're coming up on this uh, turn off or you're coming up on this or coming up on that. And there's those guideposts to let you know that, that the direction that you're going, what is coming, what you are about to uh, approach. And that's exactly what the word of God does. God's word lets us know what is coming. Hey, even better yet, God's word lets us know who is coming. Amen. And he lets us know so that we can see, wow, we're getting closer right? And you got the Google Maps letting you know that, or even just the visuals. If you've traveled an area a number of times, you just know, okay, I'm all that much uh, closer to the destination, right? Anyhow, verse four, look at, for every creature of God, every creature of God is good, and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Now listen, this is uh, the letter to young Pastor Timothy. All right. Paul, the apostle here, writing this letter under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to young Pastor Timothy. Why? Because he's instructing the instructor. Uh, you know, back in the day and in, in the regular workforce, we would call it training the trainer is what we would call it. It's training the trainer or it's instructing the instructor. It's a, a head pastor over a, a, another pastor, right? And instructing him under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And he's saying, if you instruct the brethren in these things, what are these things? Well, what we've already uh, discussed so far, right? That in the latter days, there's things that are going to be coming. You need to look out for them, right? But we also know that in the latter time, that there are those that will give heed to doctrines of demons and, 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 and deceiving spirits and all, right? The enemy is great as ma at making falsehood look true. Listen now, the enemy loves to give you or loves to give people a, an element of truth, right? And he loves to take a lie. It, it can just be one, oh, just seemingly insignificant lie, right? Seemingly. And he wraps it in the truth. And he wraps it and he wraps it and he wraps it, right? And we get so caught up. It's so easy if one is really not looking, right? And, and understanding what Scripture says in the doctrine of the Word to get into the the things that are not correct, because what happens? Well, we, we look at the cover of a book and we're like, wow, the title sounds great. How to be more spiritual as a man of God or as a woman of God. Ooh, I want to know how to be more, more spiritual. And it might say, it might even quote this scripture or that scripture. Some of those scriptures it may quote as it may even be twisting, right? But, but you, 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 you become desensitized by the things, <clears throat> by the things that were correct that you saw or that you read, okay? And so what happens is now you let your guard down. And that's the thing that tends to happen, you see, is that those guards get let down and all. And anyhow, and so we find ourselves, or people, I should say, can find themselves in this place. The enemy loves to wrap a lie in the truth to make it more digestible, if you instruct the brethren in these things, that means the brothers in the body of Christ need to be instructed, right? The brothers in the body of Christ, the brothers and sisters need to be instructed in good, healthy doctrine, need to be instructed in the things that are coming upon the world. Why? Well, God wouldn't have told us if he didn't want us to know, right? It also allows for there to be all the more of a sense of urgency because you know the time is short. Guys, now listen to me for just a second. 
Back in the day when I worked in restaurants, right, there was no one that the restaurant owner, that the restaurant CEO, that the executive chef, and that everyone on staff feared more than, you know who? The health department. You, the, the health department, they are you know, God, so to speak, over the restaurant, right? They can, contr- they can shut you down like that. They can th- change your, you know, uh, your rating and all of these kinds of things, right? No one you fear more. And you know when they haven't been there for quite a while and you know you deal with, you know, X amount of inspections a year, you know that it's getting close. Well, when you know that it's getting close, what happens? Well, normally the general manager of the restaurant starts letting everyone know, hey guys, it, we're getting close to an inspection. It can be any moment, any day now, um, but we're getting close. And what happens when people know, that, well, again, in the restaurant business, that the inspection is getting close? Man, I'll tell you what, they make sure they have their uh, their health card on them required or you're going to be you're going to be out the door you're going to lose the rest of your shift you're going to be written up you're going to make sure you got your health card on you absolutely necessary because they go around and check on all those things something else that you're going to make sure is that all of the refrigerator and freezer temperatures are maintained properly all of the food that is in uh, different things is maintained properly that you've got um, different utensils for everything so that the staff is not grabbing things by their hand you there's no stone unturned everyone is on alert right everyone because what there is an anticipation guys i want you to understand this guys we're seeing the things that are happening right now we read what the word of god says and that means that we have a heightened anticipation Right. And in the moment of having or in this time in which we are in, that there is this heightened anticipation. What does it tend to do to us? It has us doing more. It has us alert. We're watching. We're waiting. We're witnessing. Right. We are desiring even more so to live a sanctified life, to walk in purity before the Lord, right? And that is part of the purpose, part of the purpose. Now, another part of the purpose in all of this is that it allows us to be able to speak to those around us because they're talking about things, right? They're talking about all the crazy you know, mumbo jumbo that's going on in the world, but they don't know how to draw the conclusion from what they're seeing. We do. Oh, how aren't you afraid that they keep on on talking about, you know, shooting nukes back and forth? Well, I don't need to be afraid. Let me tell you why I don't need to be afraid. I don't know what's going on with Israel. I don't, you know, looks like they're just going to absolutely destroy Israel and it's not going to be around anymore. Oh, I can tell you that it will be around because let me give you the intel on this right here. Okay, and, and so and it, be, it begins to become a segue by which we can minister to those around us. Amen. There's many segues. Bible prophecy is one of them. Okay, stick with me here for just a moment. So it says, if you instruct the brethren in these things, which means that we are to do so, you will be a good minister of Jesus Christ. See, that's part of being a good minister. Part of being a good minister is not being afraid to tackle the things that the word speaks about. Amen. Not being afraid to tackle those things, to discuss those things. So you'll be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished in the words of faith and of the good doctrine. Second time we see that, second or third, uh, that we see that already right there. I think it's second. Uh, Of the good doctrine which you have carefully followed. But reject profane and old wives' fables. Exercise yourselves towards godliness. For bodily exercise is uh, profits a little, Um, I I don't have to worry about that one, Uh, but uh, godliness is profitable for all things, having the promise of life that now is and that which is to come. Now, stick with me, guys. This is a faithful saying. 
and worthy of all acceptance. For to this end, we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God. What does that mean there, that word reproach? Rebuke, criticism. How many times have you received rebuke or criticism, right? Because of your walk with the Lord. Well, maybe you have, maybe you haven't. Uh, I have a number of times, right? Because we trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men, especially those who believe. These things command and what is that last word? Teach. Wait, what is that last word? Te- I still didn't hear y'all. What is that last word? Teach. Okay, thank you. To teach these things. And pastor instructing younger pastor is instructing him under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, teach these things. Yes. For to this end, we both labor and suffer reproach. Now listen, these things command and teach. Now look at this. We're going to end on verse 13. Verse 12 says, let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in word, conduct, love, Spirit, faith, purity. Till I come, give attention to reading, towards exhortation, and to what's that last word? To doctrine. Guys, you can't can't make these things up. It's right here in the word. He he keeps, the, the apostle keeps on hammering the point. There is aberrant doctrine and there is correct doctrine of holy scripture it is incumbent upon us to know not only who we believe in but the full compass of what we believe and why we believe it because people like me ask questions (laughs) i'm a question asker i would go up to my pastor um this was for oh wow this was for a good couple of years. Good. Probably even longer than that. Uh, actually, it was probably more like a few years after I came to the Lord. And every service, man, I would have like a notepad, and I would write really small, and I would, have, I would put Q for question, next question, then Q, Q, Q. And I'd go, um, okay, so now about this, you said this, and about that, and, and so explain this, and how can that be? And because I'm e- I was eager to learn. I'm, I, I, I'm eager. I want to know. I want to understand. I, I, wanna, I, want, I, want the, I don't want just a, one part or another part there. I want the full enchilada, okay? Guys, it is so important that we know true biblical doctrine that we can refute that which is not. And all in the mix of this, pastors are called to teach this. And all in the midst of this, is dealing with the latter times and those departing from the faith and deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons and just weird things like, hey, telling you to abstain from from, uh, uh, certain foods that God created and, and all of these kinds of things. It's so important, folks, and it's so needful for us to to have a good, uh, healthy understanding of, of all of these things. Now, listen. We're going to start looking at some of these things here that are happening that I believe are harbingers of um, of what is ultimately going to come upon this world. What is ultimately going to come upon this world? Check this out right here. Liberty Sentinel. Uh, It's great, guys. I encourage you to, to, uh, it's from Alex Newman. Go online and check out Liberty Sentinel. He, Alex Newman, he is uh, top-notch pro uh, uh, reporter, uh, investigates things, gets uh, down into the nitty-gritty believer uh, in the Lord. I mean, he's on all of the news channels and everything else out there. The guy is really, uh, he's really top-notch and uh, Uh, The things that he shares are just incredible. But this right here, how the deep state is using artificial intelligence to brainwash children, control elections, and surveil the world. 
Wow, guys. I mean, they are they're, they're messing with things. We know that they are messing with things. AI programmed uh, by raging totalitarians is being used by the deep state to indoctrinate children by replacing human teachers. Um, and by the way, AI has been utilized already in pulpits. Already in pulpits like what a lazy so-called pastor. OK, and I'm going to say so-called pastor because that is the most ridiculous thing I have ever seen. And can you even trust AI? You got to understand something here, guys. AI only outputs what has been input. You understand that right now because the world is engrossed in sin right and we've already read about doctrines of demons we already see that the majority of the world is either following after false gods or they think they themselves are a god okay which is still another uh, version of a false god or they just say i don't believe in anything okay that's the majority of the world the majority of the input going into these systems OK, it doesn't mean that everything is wrong that goes into these systems. Uh, not at all. OK, but there is so much. There is so much, guys. And so this is incredibly, incredibly dangerous. Now, I'm not saying that everything with artificial intelligence is awful. No more than I could say every book in a library is is bad. No more than I could say everything that is on YouTube uh, is wrong. Uh, no more than I could say everything that takes place uh, uh, in Washington, D.C. or the White House. No way, i got to take that one back. So, um, <laughs> but uh, aside from that, aside from that, okay. But, but folks, it's this, this is dangerous stuff. And they're utilizing and they can very easily manipulate these things uh, to, again, control elections, uh, brainwash children, surveil the world. And the surveillance, world surveillance is a biggie, biggie, biggie with me. Uh, Alex Newman, um, in uh, this particular episode, Behind the Deep State, um, uh, additionally, uh, AI is now infiltrating elections. I don't think that should be a surprise to us. Klaus Schwab, right? Klaus Schwab. Then he kind of looks like uh, Emperor Palpatine, by the way. Remember from Star, Star Wars and everything, doesn't it? And he kind of sounds kind of a little bit like that too. Really creepy. Founder of the World Economic Forum noted that technology is involved is evolving from analytical power to predictive power, uh, which would then result in prescriptive mode Schwab said you don't even have to have elections anymore Wow because you can already predict them AI can predict the outcome of the election oh okay so we're just going to give that to artificial intelligence which already has the input of mankind hmm. and afterwards you can say he said why do we need elections because we know what the result will be. Guys, this guy, along with his sidekick, Yuval Noah Harari, who is the principal researcher and AI visionary at, uh, or, or also the AI visionary at Google, uh, Ray uh, Kurzweil, believes that AI will soon surpass humans and become like God. Guys, it's that serious, and it's getting worse, and that's just AI. I was talking with, uh, with someone recently. In fact, we had it on one of our programs. Look, there's AI, then there's AGI, artificial general intelligence. That's even another step up. There's ASI, which is artificial super intelligence, all right? And uh, this can get pretty scary pretty fast, you know? It really can. But these are the things that they are doing. Okay, next, let's check out this one uh, right here. Church attendance. Church attendance has declined in most religious, most U.S. religious groups, I should say. Guys, think about that. Church attendance has declined in most uh, U.S. religious groups. Wow. Three in ten adults attend religious services regularly. 
Do you know who leads that? Mormons, 67%. I want you to think about that. Mormons lead that 67%. Now, Vegas is originally a Mormon settlement. Okay, I don't know if you know that or not, but it's originally a Mormon settlement. It's a Mormon stronghold. Now, guys, now listen. Which means, now we know of the doctrines of demons, right? What does it even say in the book of Galatians chapter 1? If any comes to you preaching another gospel, let him be accursed. Again, I say to you, if anyone, so he repeats it, right? That, that just adds oomph to it, right? Again, I say, if any comes to you preaching, even if an angel comes doing, doing so, right? Let him be accursed. And what is the one that came to them? Hey, it was the angel right? Moroni, the angel Moroni, right? And the golden plates and, and all of these things. Guys, listen, I'm not going to get into a, a, a discussion on, you know, like from Walter Martin and the kingdom of the cults and all of that here tonight. But guys, it outlines it so clearly just right there in Galatians chapter 1. OK, and what did they have? They had an angel come to them, the angel Moroni and the golden plates and another. What does it say? One of the um, uh, books of Mormon that was uh, given to me many, many years ago. You know what it said on it on the front cover? Another Testament. Another Testament. Guys, it's really interesting because, you know, I had read and I've got it in my archives in my office there long time ago, from the Smithsonian Institute, right? Because the Mormons make all of these claims, all right? And they make these claims of, of you know, how Christ came here and uh, into the Americas, and, and they make a, a whole bunch of claims that it's very interesting. They cannot be found, or they have not been discovered um, archaeologically. And the Smithsonian Institute even had written something up in regards to that. Now, it's interesting because with the Bible, all of these things that are said, this happened there and it happened this way. And there was this kind of tree and that kind of grain and and and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And lo and behold, archaeological digs and this is turned up and that's turned up. And they discover the very thing that the naysayers were saying, oh, see, the Bible's fake because, you know, this isn't so-and-so, and, or whatever it might be. And guess what? And they discover those very things to the T. But the Smithsonian Institute actually noted that we're not finding these things that they're saying. There's no archaeological proof or evidence. Why? Because it's all lies and it's all falsehood, folks. You know, and it's, and it's so sad. So it, it's so sad to me that those with doctrines of demons, okay, here you go, 67%. Wow. So as Americans observe Ramadan and prepare to celebrate Resurrection Sunday, Passover, the percentage of adults who reportedly regularly attend religious services remains low. Again, 3 in 10 say they attend rel religious services every week. Okay, that's uh, 21% or almost every week. Or 21% is almost every week. Um... I'm sorry, I'm reading that wrong. Almost every week is 9%. And it goes on, and it just, it breaks it down uh, from there, uh, again, with the Mormons and uh, with a number of others there as well. And guys, do you see a problem here? The more that I see and that I have seen over a number of decades, the church in America in decline. The more that I have observed the church in America in decline, the more I have seen the rise of lawlessness, crime, every kind of sinful activity that you can imagine that has always been around, okay? But those things are growing. Those things are growing dramatically look guys when we look in uh matthew chapter 24 which is placed during the tribulation important um distinction to make and to understand it is not before the tribulation it is placed during the tribulation 
And it talks about the wars and rumors of wars and all kinds of things. And we see, you know, the growth of lawlessness and so many things. Guys, we are witnessing the preparation for all of that, which is going to reach a zenith then. We are seeing things move in the direction now but have not reached the level because we're not in the tribulation, have not reached the level that we read about there in the word of God. Now, listen, church attendance, uh, and I'm going to say Christians in America, okay, we're seeing, we're not seeing as, as many today as we were seeing, you know, higher numbers, not saying that they were many in America. Other times past. All right. And I find it interesting that the more we see this, the more we see things, the effect of those things here um, in our nation today. Can you imagine what it's going to look like when the church has been removed? Well, you don't need to imagine. Just read about it here in the word. Just read about it. It's pretty awful uh, when you think of that. So listen now, it says in Second Chronicles chapter seven, verse 14, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. Guys, we need the land of America to be healed. We've got coming up here uh, in early, uh, uh, what is it, early May, we've got the National Day of Prayer, the first Thursday in May. Guys, I can't encourage you enough. If you are not working, if you are not in the ER that day, okay, uh, um, you know what, give up golf that day. Give up whatever it might be and come on out to the National Day of Prayer. We've been talking about that. Uh, churches from all across the city uh, in southern Nevada are going to be joining with us on the National Day of Prayer. Because what? If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. He's saying what he will do. I believe the church needs to rise up, not roll over rover. I don't read the roll over rover verse in the word of God. I don't read that. We need to rise up. Now, when I say rise up, I'm not saying that we get out there with our pickets and and we're picketing this thing and picketing that thing. Our testimony isn't picketing. Our testimony is Jesus. Right. They need Jesus just as I needed Jesus. I still need Jesus, don't get me wrong, but you, you know, to come to Christ. They need the Lord. Guys, we need to pray for our country. Our country is at a crossroads. It's been at a crossroads for some time, but it's growing. It's growing. All right, so let's check this one out. <clears throat> Biden set. Biden set to seed future pandemic response to the WHO next month. That's the World Health Organization. As I've said before, guys, I'm going to keep on putting this out there. The Biden admini- uh, uh, regime, the Biden regime, okay, the Biden regime are the ones that initiated this whole thing with the WHO. We are not only involved participants in this thing it was originated and put forth by the biden regime guys that's how wicked all of this is now what is this congressional republicans are calling on joe biden to abandon plans for a pandemic treaty that would strengthen the who citing that global bodies numerous failures during the um sickness right y'all know what the sickness is right 
Anyhow, it goes on from there. It would, the World Health Organization, uh, it would boost its authority to declare public health emergencies and give it new powers that are over the United States. In other words, in entering into this treaty, we cede away our uh, sovereignty. And we allow some other Yahoo in the world to dictate policy to the United States of America and 193 other member states during such emergencies or presumed emergencies, maybe we could say. It's that serious, guys. It's that serious. Guys, there's a lot of things that the WHO would have the ability to be able to do should this actually pass um, towards the end of next month. We got just a little bit of a month, a little bit over a month away uh, from this whole thing. Guys, they could literally shut down, you name it. We think what took place, what is it, four, four and a half years ago was big. Guys, you ain't seen anything. You ain't seen anything. They didn't have the full power at that time. But this treaty, if it passes, will give them full power to do what they didn't have full power to do before. You want to see pastors taken away to, to prison, to jail? You'll see it under that. I will tell you right now, you'll see it under that. Churches that will be enforced to be closed, chained to be closed, monitored by by police fines upon people if you come out of your home when they say you can't come out of your home if you decide to have a home bible study right well let me tell you something the police will be watching do you know why because your neighbors will be snitches this was already taking place a few years ago and neighbors were snitching on neighbors. Oh, they didn't seem to care if you were watching the Super Bowl with your, with your buddies. But if you're there singing, singing some Holy Spirit-filled worship song, you know, well, now that's a, you know, a super spreading event, you know. Guys, this is a big, big deal. A very big deal. And this right here is preparing... If this passes, this is preparation. Seriously speaking, guys, this is preparation for uh, nothing short of persecution in America. Because the enemy will look at anything that he can in which to bring the church down. He'll look at anything that he can. Nope, Randall, I agree. Not good at all. Not good at all. All right, so let's move on. Check this out. A bold gene editing solution began testing, then hit the strangest twist. By the way, before I move on with this, guys and gals, um, I hope that you got a chance to see uh, my program. It's the second uh, episode of my new program on Hope for Our Times. It's an exclusive right there. If you go to uh, Hope for Our Times on uh, on uh, uh, the YouTube on YouTube there, you'll be able to see it. Um, the name of my program is Through the Lens, and. Um, uh, and then we've got, so this was episode two that we just put out at 6 a.m. Pacific time this past Friday. Check that out on Hope for Our Times there. On uh, You can go to their website. You can check it out if you got their app. Um, I think it's also on their Rumble. Um, and uh, for probably the majority of people that go on YouTube, you'll see it on there as well. Anyhow. A bold gene editing solution began testing and then hit. <laughs> the strangest twist. Okay, guys, like right off the bat, why do we need to edit genes? And I'm not talking about your Levi's <laughs> or your Wranglers or whatever, okay? Why do we need to edit genes? I'll tell you why. Because they are and they have been for a long time. Guys, it goes back to uh, uh, eugenics, back that was being practiced by the Nazis. 
Let's understand something here. They were doing the most horrific experiments on live people, on live people during uh, and uh, during the, um, uh, you know, World War II and, and all of that there in Nazi Germany. Dr. Joseph Goebbels, what a devil of a of a of a person. OK, I mean, literally just absolutely wickedness. Uh, I mean, it, uh, the things that, that took place, guys, I'm not even going to share some of the things that, that took place that they were doing, okay? But literally messing with things, trying to manipulate things, right? Trying to harness things that are only for God to, you know, that are, that are the things that God has programmed into man. Literally trying to change the programming at the genetic level, okay? Are you with me? What do you think? Do you think that's going to be a good thing? Do you think that's the kind of power? Listen now, they start manipulating mankind like that. And then you start having a race of people that are born from those that have been edited genetically. All right. And you start changing things within the human race. They've been manipulating these things for a while, um, playing with, with animals and, and those kinds of things and doing those things. And they're now they're moving on to humans. Guys, I look at all of this as, as going back to some of the things that we read. And I talked about this recently that we read about in the Old Testament, guys. And it is really, yes, Genesis is really, really, really interesting. The enemy wants to manipulate the very things. What God provides, Satan loves to try his best to pervert. Gene editing has been hailed by some as the next generation of medicine. No, thank you. That's because gene editing systems like CRISPR, C-R-I-S-P-R, gave scientists an incredible ability to manipulate the genome. Guys, do we need to even look any further as how they were manipulating things four years ago? And then we saw a dramatic rise in cancers, a dramatic rise in Heart issues, in heart attacks, in a, a strange blood clots, okay? There is a direct connection, a direct connection between women that got that and losing their child, okay? A dramatic increase. Guys, there's so many, so many other things we could talk about with this. Guys, they are constantly trying to man manipulate these things. And that, to me, is very end times-esque, if you would. The enemy is a manipulator. He's a manipulator. He loves playing with things that shouldn't be played with. They're doing this with men and women today, right? We see that. We've talked a lot about that. What are some other things that, that we see? And this, this stuff right here, guys, now listen, as we talk about money and the mark, right? We know that the mark of the beast will, will be here, the midpoint of the tribulation, right? That cashless society and all. Look at this right here. Bank of America, this is on Yahoo, Yahoo Finance. Bank of America CEO, we want a cashless society. Bank of America is the second largest bank in America, the second largest bank in America. And this is the CEO. This was now five years ago. This was in 2019. And he said, we want a cashless society. In fact, I want you to listen to it coming directly from him right here. If you guys are ready back there, check this out right here. We are the largest sort of card coming out of wallets, Google Pay, Apple Pay, Samsung Pay. That total was $4 billion last year. So 10 factor already on Zelle, and Zelle's growing at a faster rate. So the, the draw, it's going to 100% a year, basically, Zelle transactions are. So you're atomizing money, you're making it more um, 
uh, available, just like the ATM did when you could go in and get 20s instead of 100s because you didn't want to stay in line just to get 20s, and suddenly 20s became the norm going out of the machine, and $40 was a lot, and you could go back. And this has all changed the way money works, but there's both a tax on both sides, and driving down the cost is a preeminent thing. And we've been driving that cost down hard uh, because we want, to be, we want a cashless society. It costs us $5 billion for checks and cash to move around our company. You want to cash the society. We are driving towards a faster, but we have more to gain than anybody, in a sense, from a pure operating cost. And, and, and so we, we're driving it, and, and the cost will come down, and everything's happening, and the costs are already very low. It's very efficient, very little fraud when you actually look at the volumes going through. Wow. So, guys, now listen. I started talking about this kind of stuff years ago, before he was talking about it before many pastors were talking about those things, right? And people look at you like you got a, you know, uh, another eye here in the middle of your head, like, you know, what planet are you on? What are you talking about? Cashless society and everything. You can't go without cash and digital money. In fact, what is digital? All these kinds of things. But guys, look at these. It's going in that direction. How did I know? How did many of you know? Because we see what the word of God says and the word of God speaks about it. It speaks about these things. And listen to this. It says, he pointed out that more than half of all money transactions are already processed electronically. And with the rise of cryptocurrencies and payment systems like PayPal, uh, Zelle, digital wallets, all of that kind of stuff, right? A 2018 San Francisco Federal Reserve report found that cash continues to be the most frequently used payment instrument, representing 30% of all, all transactions at that, at that point. Uh, it's five years ago. And 55% of transactions under $10. Uh, but still, the combination of cryptocurrencies, uh, uh, cash, uh, cashless payments, electronic walnuts, uh, walnuts, <laughs> uh, wallets, Wallets, not walnuts. What's an electronic walnut, Pastor? I don't know. Okay, electronic wallets like Google Pay, Apple Pay, all of these are slowly eroding the need for hard currency. Okay? All of this must happen. Must happen. For the, the stage to be set. Guys, when... Remember, when you begin to see all these things, right? We read about the birth pains, right? We read about the birth pains. Guys, I mean, I still remember, it wasn't like this because I learned the first time, first time around um, so that when we had our second child, didn't have to deal, didn't deal with this. But our first one, right, went to bed. Uh, Jordan, he was late by almost two weeks. My poor wife, man, she was you know, just being tortured in the middle, in summer, you know, the end of summer. And, uh, you know, and of course, leading up to all that stuff, we went through the Lamaze classes and all those kinds of things back in the day, at least, you know, and, and all of that. And she wakes me up in the middle of the night. She, I guess, had been out on the couch and wakes me up in the middle of the night. I, I think it, you know, it, uh, the time is now and, and that kind of stuff. So we go back to the couch. She's laying on the couch. I'm okay. All right, honey. So just, just you know, squeeze my hand. You know, when when you start having those contractions and we're going to, you know, we're going to count these and, you know, all this kind of stuff and everything. And, and man, I'll tell you what, she put on the squeeze like like it was Arnold Schwarzenegger, the hand of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Right. And it was just like, and it was like, whoa, whoa. And they came more and more and more. And what does that tell you when you when you well, for me, when you feel that <laughs> she was feeling uh, herself, though, right? When you feel that, when you when you see that and you're timing that you see that the frequency was growing, the intensity was growing because there was a delivery that was going to take place, guys. And so so, too, we see the frequency and the intensity and we know that the time is near. Guys, I got to encourage you. Don't give up the fight. Don't grow weary in doing good. God will reward you regardless of any, regardless of any time when you go out there and you tell people about Jesus. Look, you're planting seeds. You don't know when God is going to bring that seed and germinate that seed and allow that seed to grow. We don't know. Some seeds take a long time. Some seeds are shorter. Some seeds don't grow at all. But guys, that's not our concern because the word of God says that it is God who brings the increase. 
we just know that we are in a heightened time. Why? Because the pains are getting more frequent and more intense. And that tells us that our time is short. And so we see all of these things happening. We know it's all going to come about. We listen to what he said. Guys, it's even worse than that. I want you to listen. Listen to this, uh, this guy. So obviously he was recording this and um, at least it appears, you know, maybe he had one of those uh, kind of like hat, hat cameras. You ever seen those? Right. I don't know. But he starts recording this in a bank in Canada. In a bank in Canada. And he's trying to withdraw, I think it's $3,000, all right? Trying to withdraw $3,000 of his own money from his bank, right? And watch, or listen, well, listen and watch to this whole thing. Wait, I don't understand, what are you talking about? So, I need to give you a bank draft. Or if you're gonna get cash, I would need an invoice for the car purchase. Why? No, I'd like to. T- it's for it, the car's payments for in cash. I know I can't. I can't use a bank draft. Are you buying from like a private? Yeah, it's private. Person? It's literally from my friend. From your friend? Yeah, but he wants it in cash. Can he give you like anything that you want to purchase from him? Okay, now let's pause this for a second. He's gone to the bank in Canada to withdraw $3,000 of his own money that's been in that bank, right? And he's being, being given the third degree as to, well, why are you withdrawing the money to do that? Well, what are you using the money for? Well, and, and he's, he, there's, he's just being questioned. He's being interrogated by the bank to obtain his own money. Guys, by the way, this is not uncommon. And I'm not saying only in Canada. Here in the U.S., this keeps on happening. Let's continue to listen. No, I don't, you don't need that. I, bro, what is it? I'm only asking for three. What, what is this? I, I, it's my money. I'm allowed to withdraw from my own bank account. He said, what's the maximum limit you can give a withdrawal to a customer? It's 3000 so there, I guess in Canada or with that bank, I don't know, which, which, whichever it is, there is a maximum limit of $3,000 that you can uh, withdraw uh, from the bank. I don't know if it's within a day or a week. or I, I don't know all the parameters of it, but that is. So he was withdrawing what he is allowed to withdraw. He wasn't asking for more than that, okay, he was with, which, which that even in and of itself is weird. So see, folks, this is what they're doing. First, they start telling you, well, You know, you can only take out yay amount of cash. Wait a minute. You accepted it when I put it in the bank. And it is my money. But now you're telling me this is what's been happening over the past few years. All right. It's happening all over the world. All over the world. So he's he's following, technically following the rules. On the date, you've already mentioned that multiple times. Yeah, not today. Why not today? Today I would need a bank job. So he's saying, I, I want my money. I want that $3,000. And she's saying, no, not today. So now she's turning him down. Do you know why she's turning him down? No, well, yeah, well, that's, that's its own issue, too. The banks don't have all the money because they're lending it out. So the banks are going to be lending out probably, it depends, you know, and, and there's certain regulations on that, and the regulations are all baloney anyhow. But a bank, let's say, lends out 80% of what it, uh, of what it takes in, right? Well, can you imagine if everyone were, were coming in? <laughs> See, this is part of the, the, the tricky stuff that goes on with the banks. OK, but there, it's, it's more than it's more than just that. Surely the bank has three thousand dollars that it can, you know, uh, of course. I mean, you have banking regulators and all that kind of stuff. There's not a run on banks. It's not like everyone's going to the bank, taking out their money. And, you know, and there's a, a, a bank run like it was taking place there in uh, uh, what was it? The 1929 or whatever it is, um, that kind of thing. But there's another aspect to this as well, guys. It's control. OK. They want to know what you're doing with your money. 
They want to control it. And see, this is part of the reason. We're going to get back to this. We've still got more to watch here. This is part of the reason why things need to move to a digital economy. Because the Antichrist will not be able to have the control over people that he wants if it's cash. Okay? There's too much wiggle room. There's too many ways to find a workaround the system of the tribulation if cash is involved. But not if things are digital. They will have total control. Well, you will say, well, yeah, but this is in the bank and they seem to have total control here. Not exactly. They have a lot of control and that control is growing. And it changes from country to country. The rules have been have been getting tighter and tighter. OK, but if you have money, you know, like they say, back in the day, people stuffing money under their mattress or or whatever. Right. Well, guys, you think at some point that that's going to work for you. That's not going to work either because they will have total control if it's digital. Total control. OK, and look what this guy is going through. So what they're trying to do is to justify. I want to know what you're doing with your money so that I can justify if it's okay. Think about that. All right. Now let's continue. And listen, what does it say on there? Banker refuses customers withdrawal. And he's following the rules. Not more than $3,000. But what you don't you see need proof of what it is. Why is that? And why is that? Why is that? Why do you need? Why do you need me to tell you what it is? Why do you need? What kind of proof is that? I bring in a note. Like, what? How is that? What is that going to change? I don't understand. So that would <laughs> think about that. And he could he could have forged the note anyhow. I mean, so what would that even mean? Listen. I'm not taking a bank job. I would like cash, please. I won't be able to give you cash here. And tell you. <laughs> Guys, this is absolutely ridiculous. Ridiculous. And it's going to get worse. It's going to continue to spread. Like I've said before, guys, little by little by little, and then bam, all at once. Right? Little by little by little, and then it, it, it just comes out of a hose, man. It's just like it's insane. And that is exactly what we are witnessing today. Guys, I don't trust banks, but I have to use banks. Right. I mean, there's no way. I mean, we got to. But I don't trust them. I don't trust the stock market. Now, I don't have to use the stock market, but I don't trust the stock market. Think about that. We are watching. We are watching this unfold before our very eyes. And this is absolutely wild. Absolutely wild, guys. OK, so let's look at this right here. Talking about money. Over 12 Republican-led states plan to send letter to Bank of America demanding explanation for why it allegedly debanked Christian and other conservative groups. Really? Wow. Yes, yeah, surprise. Debanking. Guys, this has been happening. Oh, and by the way, what is the bank in the photo? B of A. Remember we showed the first video that we showed, right? B of A uh, uh, CEO there. This was five years ago. B of A. Anyhow, a dozen Republican-led states plan to send a letter to Bank of America demanding an explanation for why it allegedly debanked Christian and other conservative groups. Oh, wait a minute. We don't like... Guys, it's already happened in a different way, and I've shared this before. It's already happened to us. This church, a Christian, Christian lending institution, cleared us, you know, for the, for the loan to move forward with the new property. Cleared us. It was just a matter of just, you know, kind of finalizing things. But we had got the initial, hey, you guys look good on paper kind of thing, Right. Until one of the board members watched a Maranatha service and said, nope. Nope. Why do you think? 
the wokeism that has creeped into the Christian church, guys. The wokeism that has creeped in. The enemy loves to creep in, right? And he doesn't look like, you know, the big bad guy with, you know, horns and a red union suit and a pitchfork. He comes as an angel of light. He comes as a sweet talker. And all it took was that one board member at that Christian lending institution to say no because they didn't like what we say in a message. Wow. And they get away with it. They get away with that. Think about that in America. So I myself and I was ooh, I was fit to be tied. <laughs> Let me tell you, not because of the of the loan. I mean, we can get a loan. We got a loan somewhere else. That was not a problem. OK, it was the point. And so I've experienced this myself as a church, guys. Think about that. So it's all about, like I say all the time, it's always about money and power. It's about money and power. When you look at the beast system, it's about money and power. It really is. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. So uh, allegedly debanking Christians and other conservative groups. The notice comes after it was revealed that Bank of America sent the FBI and U.S. Treasury private consumer financial data to help the agencies investigate what they say are crimes related to the month after December, the day after the 5th. Wow. We don't agree with your views. Now, with us here, it, 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 it didn't have to do with that kind of stuff. But I'm just saying, though, guys, listen. Unfortunately, Bank of America appears to be conditioning access to its services on customers having the bank preferred religious and political views. Wow. Guys, in fact, it even, <clears throat> excuse me, it was even written by, listen, led by Kansas Attorney General Chris Kobach and said this. In the letter to them, your discriminatory behavior is a serious threat to free speech and religious freedom, is potentially illegal, and is causing political and regulatory backlash. Folks, we are definitely living in very, very different and interesting and different times today. This isn't your moms and dads and your grandparents' America any longer, guys. The republic has fallen. The republic has fallen. We've gone from a republic to a democracy, and that's not a good thing. That's not a good thing because a democracy is the people, the majority rules. But as we continue to see the church in decline in America, we are seeing crazy stuff taking place in America and the lawlessness, the growth of laws. Look, guys, how many people were celebrating? Yesterday was 420, right? Oh, it's the potheads, the, you know, owed to whatever. Do you know that it's the biggest holiday of the year in Canada? That is the biggest holiday is 420. Like I said, that's the that's the pot celebration holiday of the year you know and the more that these things get legalized guys do you think you've got the right people making decisions and whatnot look at what's going on in the universities think about that there's a i believe it was a girl if i remember correctly i think it was at yale i think it was at yale all right and there was a Palestinian supporter with a Palestinian flag that took the flag, and well, whether it was this way or this way, and literally went into her eye with it. Now, guys, she's recovering, and she will be okay, praise the Lord. First, I've been saying this for a long time, guys. I've been saying this for years. First, it's the Jews, and then it's you. 
okay? And we're seeing both of these grow in America. I was at and uh, was privileged and honored um, to be able to be uh, one of the speakers at um, the Western States uh, Church Protectors uh, Workshop here, what was it, a couple weeks ago, I guess it is now? Yeah. Week ago, okay, week ago, and uh, a two-day uh, conference there and everything. And the, the main keynote speaker of that event loves the Lord, born-again Christian, Jimmy Meeks. Th- he was 35 years on the force there uh, in Texas. He... Um, uh, was also a, a senior pastor of a church and all of this. He's seen a lot. And he's actually talking to everybody about the importance and the need in America, where we're at right now, of getting uh, special protection for your windows to make your windows bulletproof. I know, I know of uh, synagogues and, uh, what do you call it, and messianic churches here in town that have had to get that special um, kind of bulletproof glass stuff. Okay, it's very expensive to do that. This is where we're at, right here in Las Vegas. And he's mentioning to the churches, you need to really consider this. And he's mentioning some specifics on some different things I'm not going to get into uh, right now. Guys, none of this stuff, I mean, this is, this is ridiculous. We never would have talked about or discussed these things. There was a woman in northern Nevada. This was just... Uh, no more than two weeks ago, in northern Nevada, my state, she was in the parking lot. She was in heels. She was in the parking lot. And she was being chased across the parking lot from a machete-wielding man. Luckily, he tripped. And she survived. Guys, things are changing rapidly here in America. We didn't used to talk about these things. And these things that I'm telling you, this stuff is every week. It's happening every week, multiple times a week here in America now. Things are changing. Things are changing. You want to know one of the things that are, that's changing? The weather. In fact, I talked about this, um, not the things that I'm sharing with you today, different things that I shared with everyone on Hope for Our Times on Friday morning on my Through the Lens program. And I titled that particular program, Technology of the End, Weaponizing Weather. Weaponizing Weather. I encourage you to check that out. But let's look at this right here that is going on now. I didn't report on this. Storm uh, dumps heaviest rain ever recorded in desert nation of the United Arab Emirates, UAE, flooding roads and Dubai's airport heavy thunderstorms last the united arab emirates uh, dumping the heaviest rain ever recorded in the country in a span of just hours guys it was absolutely epic absolutely epic epic if you see any of the videos it's like holy cow holy toledo man State-run WAM news agency called the rain a historic weather event. Guys, we are watching many weird and strange historic weather events. And do you know why? Because they have and they have had, and I explained some of this on the program on Hope for Our Times. Very, It's all documented, guys. This, this isn't just, you know, this isn't conspiracy theory stuff. This is very real. Uh, very real. They talk about it in the Senate and, uh, you know, in different uh, subcommittee uh, meetings and all of this. Right. The technologies to literally manipulate weather and weather patterns. So literally turning the weather into a weapon of warfare. They have the ability to do. Look, everyone was talking about. The extremely strange fires in Lahaina, right? Well, not just strange. There's more to it. A lot more to it. And by the way, why do you think that there has been this whole thing where nobody nobody can can go into those areas? Why? 
What can't people see? What are they trying to change? What are they trying to clean up? What of the forensics are they manipulating and messing with? Why can't people take photos? Why can't people take videos? Why can't people enter or even come on the peripheral of those areas? Why are those areas fenced off and, and literally with, with you know, kind of like you know, blanketed all around so that people can't see anything? What is going on, guys? Sound like a cover-up? You betcha. You betcha there is. Guys, they are manipulating with these things like there is no tomorrow. And we're watching strange weather patterns. Guys, when we look in the book of Revelation, we see very, very, very strange weather things taking place that God allows. Now look at this here from the Daily Mail. Meteorologist warns of global weather wars. Global weather wars. Well, wait a minute. The only way that you have a war is when man is involved, right? Think about that. The Daily Mail is a major, major publication. And it's saying meteorologist warns of global weather wars after Dubai floods. And what does he say? A meteorologist warned of this between countries, quote, if cloud seeding gets out of hand. They already know that cloud seeding takes place. We've already seen the planes that do these things as well. After the flooding, though, in Dubai spawned, spawned concerns about artificially manipulating the rainfall. See, guys, man is trying to manipulate the very nature of these things that go in you, and they even change the definition of what those are called, by the way, just a few years ago in the midst of all of this, because what they were putting in people did not, um, how do I say this as best as I can, did not um, fulfill what is a proper definition of these things because they were putting things in people that was different. They're trying to manipulate what goes into you. They're manipulating the food, genetically modified food, right? You got to look on your packages. Oh, no GMO. Okay, that's good or better, right? We already talked about other things earlier that they're manipulating. Now they're manipulating the weather. Everything around us, guys, is being played with, messed with, manipulated. Absolutely incredible, incredible stuff. So I want you to check this out right here. How does cloud seeding work? Weather stations monitor the atmosphere for suitable clouds. Planes equipped with specialized flares are launched. I'm going to show you a picture of that in just a moment, by the way, of one of those planes. Number three, up towards the top, salt is released into promising clouds. Number four, uh, there's a lot more to this than uh, it's, it's much more detail, but supercooled water condenses around salt grains. Number five, water droplets become heavy enough to fall as rain. Uh, what do you get? 15 to 25 percent extra wall, uh, rainfall each year. Um, that's what they're reporting. That's what they're reporting. Okay, uh, it could be worse depending on the application. Now, what they don't have the ability to do, at least that we know of right now, what they don't have the ability to do is to create the cloud. But what they do is they take the clouds that are there and they manipulate those clouds. That is what they're doing. In fact, uh, here's um, the back end of one of those planes. These are the, um, I don't know what you want to call them. There's a name for it there. Um, but these uh, on the back of this plane right here is what gets released in the midst of the clouds and starts manipulating with those, th uh, manipulating those things and ending up in, you know, again, the result of the things that, uh, that we see that have been happening literally um, all around the world, guys. The, the floods there that took place in the UAE were absolutely epic, uh, devastating, uh, big time, big time, uh, that has never been, been seen uh, in, in, you know, in modern history there since they've been watching those things in uh, the UAE. Uh, guys, I'm telling you, we live in very, very, very strange times. And that's the point that I'm making right here, guys. 
is that, you know, I mean, going back, like I said, almost 40 years ago, and I'm reading in, in, in different parts of the word and certainly in the book of Revelation, and I'm seeing things that are just like, I, I believed it uh, at, in my late teens and early 20s. I believed it, but I just couldn't quite figure it out. It, it was just because we weren't, we weren't close enough, you know. Um, and so the things that are discussed, there, I'm just like, well, I know these things are going to happen. And I know that God is going to allow these things to happen in his judgment upon a Christ rejecting world. Why? For the desire of getting people to look to him. Some will. Many, many will not. Okay. But I just couldn't figure a lot of these things out. Guys, I mean, I remember I was, you know, around when uh, and I know that that majority of y'all were as well when they came out with barcodes in the grocery stores, right? Remember the, the cashiers, they had to just, you know, put all the, the prices in there and everything, right? And then they came out with the barcodes. And I remember when I was, uh, you know, in my, you no, know, this was about 16 years old, actually. And, um, <laughs> and they were already talking about it's the mark of the beast and all this kind of, oh, it's not the mark of the beast, you know. But, but all of these things just getting away from, the regular way of doing things, right? It's all just setting the stage. It's all setting the stage, folks. And uh, I know that, uh, that you guys see it. I know you see it. I know that all of you guys watching online right now, you see it um, as well. I encourage you. I encourage you. We see these things happening. We know that the time is near. We know that it's getting close. Okay, how close? I can't answer that question. But it certainly is getting much closer. The frequency and the intensity is, is growing, guys. And I just want to encourage you. We don't know what things are going to come down, what things are going to happen. Whether we're talking about something that many people are going to do in booths later this year. Okay if we're even going to have the opportunity to do that, or if when we do it, if it's even legit, right? You all know what I'm talking about. I never thought I'd see the day where I didn't trust that in this country. But I'll be honest with you guys, I don't trust it. I don't trust it. Not only that, but this pandemic treaty, if that passes, if that passes, guys, they will have the green light to do whatever they want to. And it's more than just some next sickness that comes upon the world, which, by the way, I don't know if you heard or not. But now there's a couple of people in the United States who have gotten bird flu. So now... Supposedly, this has gone from bird to human. This can be an extremely serious development, extremely serious development. But it doesn't have to be something health wise like that, guys. The things that are taking place with the weather. So they're playing the games and then they're like, oh, things are out of control. We've got to allow we've got to mandate restrictions. I'm going to be talking more about that here pretty soon as well with the things that they're talking about doing because of the climate, because of the climate. And the climate is all involved with the World Health Organization, by the way. OK, so um, what I'm trying to say here is we need to think outside of the box, not just in regards to, oh, the next cough, cough, sneeze, sneeze. But there's a number of other things that the health or that the World Health Organization will have the ability to do shall this pass. And if it passes, guys, man, things are I believe things are going to move forward very, very quickly. Do I fear those things? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. If anything, the things that I see going on in the world, it just reminds me that our time here is short. And that we'll be going home, I pray, soon 
and very soon that we'll be going to see the king. I hope and I pray because I don't want to be here any more <laughs> than I need to be. Guys, let's pray. Lord, we thank you um, for tonight, Lord, and this evening and just the nature of, of things that have been discussed tonight. Lord, we pray that, um, that, Lord, that we would not lose hope. There's no reason why we should lose hope. We are the, uh, the, the saved of, of the Lord. You are our Lord. You are our Savior. You are our God. You are the one who has delivered us, Lord. And we look to you and we thank you. Lord, we pray may you give your church strength because we know that things are going to continue to get harder the longer that we're here. How hard? I don't know. How long? I don't know. But this we do know. And so, Lord, we pray, give us strength, Lord. Help us to keep our eyes fixed on you, the author and the perfecter of our faith. And Lord, we will trust in you. And we will look to you, Lord, even as we were speaking this morning in Psalm 46, as our refuge. In Jesus' name. And all God's church said, amen and amen. God bless you guys. God bless you guys.